I'm Trey, the Tangerine Dorn, a 3DO enthusiast from the Midwest. I'm Nick, the Izumi Izumi, a Japanese culture fan from the moon. And I'm Gen Genk Prak, an import gaming fan who took things one step further and moved to Plover, Wisconsin. Together, we're pretending to be Famicom Dojo, a podcast that explores the Japanese origins of today's video games and consoles. And speculates about their future. Assuming they have one. It's modern games with a retro twist. This is the Famicom Dojo Video Game Podcast. Sort of. This episode of the podcast, we kick off the fourth month of the year talking about the Nintendo Switch's successful release and a few road bumps along the way. How can we compare this to other launches by Nintendo or the other console makers? And we'll probably fill in the rest of the episode with whatever we can come up with because we don't usually talk about this stuff. Also, my pile of shame is literally the worst pile of shame Ever. <laughs> this episode of the podcast is sponsored by Nathan White. Nathan White writes, I'm sponsoring the podcast for my site, DiscSystemWorld.com. It's a chronological archive of all the Disk System games and is aiming to be. Vink has been helping me out with it. He's kind of been my sole source of actually getting the physical games I don't have, i.e. most of them. I'm a huge fan of the show and bought your Season 1 DVD way back when it first came out, and I'm glad I can once again give something back to you guys for all the great content you provided over the years. I love the podcast and look forward to the next one. Thanks, guys. And welcome to Famicom Dojo. Surprisingly <laughs> not, enough, not, this is not a, where we normally live. This I, is odd. Everything is wrong. <laughs> I uh, challenged the dojo owners and took their <laughs> sign. <laughs> it seemed it seemed like the only appropriate action that uh, I carry their like, sign with me now. <laughs> is that a Rory Kenshin reference? That's just a general samurai movie reference. Okay. Like that that's the yeah, like I've like I've I'm pretty sure like every um long running uh Jedi Geki series, you basically have at least one movie or episode where Hero runs into some a hole who's like, I challenge dojos and take their signs because I'm an a hole and then, you know, they get their butt kicked by your diminutive hero, because that's what all lone wandering samurai movies are about at the end of the day. I, th- I think I think that must be the only canonical uh, an- or reason why any of this is happening, then, right? It pretty sure, yeah. We're going with it. It's set. We're stuck with that now. That's that's the canon answer for why uh, you're hearing uh, our three voices instead of necessarily the voices you expected to hear. But uh, as this is the first episode of Famicom Dojo uh, since. Uh, um, Nintendo put a console out uh, mm. because that's responsible putting us on the microphone when that's <laughs> happened. <laughs> Good job, Bobby Cop Dojo. That's, that's probably going to be the big thing we talk about. I mean, the, I'm not saying that, that two other guys could have done a show a week earlier that, uh, that was about something kind of massive and important, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but look where we are right now. This is where we are, and where we are is, uh, well, it's, uh, let's let's talk about that then. Um, We're criminally unprepared yeah. for. Uh, the okay. Switch came out um, almost a month ago, mm-hmm. uh, from when this episode's being released, uh, obviously. we. The secret is we pre-recorded this a little bit earlier than the release date. Because unlike the sh- other podcasts, which will release their episodes within 24 hours of their recording, so people get them right away, 
other people like to sit on things for a while and then dole them out so they can be hilariously inaccurate when news happens between the recording and the release date. Um, ah, the Nick Izumi <laughs> show. Yes, that that, that was clearly what I was talking about. <laughs> um, but so the switch the switch is out and it is selling. It is selling really really well. Um, mm-hmm. It is selling about as fast as Nintendo can make them. Nintendo has. Uh, reportedly increased production by like another million units. And so that's 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 good. Um raise your hand if you own one. Yeah, that is no hands. Uh <laughs> there's a reason we haven't talked about this before. <laughs> you know, this is also another reason why maybe it was irresponsible to put us on the mic for this particular episode. <laughs> to my to my credit, I did actually get to play one yesterday. I I got to play several games on it. Uh, got to try out the demo for uh uh Puyo Pop Tetris, the kind of combo game, uh-huh. which is every bit as insane as it sounds like it would be. Okay. Uh, super fun. Right. Uh, and uh, Vink's beloved brand new Bomberman is uh everything that i wanted a brand new bomberman game to be it was it was really cool it was lots of fun um yeah no it's bomberman is one of those titles that so um i'm not letting myself buy a switch because i have a lot of high cost things coming up and frankly uh breath of the wild looks so amazing it's breath of the wild is actually the kind of game i don't let myself play because (laughs) So there was this thing that happened in college where I was playing, and this is it's a different genre of game, uh, but in, in the case this happened with Disgaea. Uh, but this happened at other points in my life too with other games that were maybe a little more open world and akin to this, where it, like, I was playing the game for so long that my eyes turned red because I wasn't blinking. Mm-hmm. I like how everyone just nods, like, that's not weird. No, it's, no, no. Like, <laughs> this guy like, specifically has had that effect <laughs> on people. Right. I have had, I, 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 I personally haven't had that happen, but there have been times where I've been, li- I've had to go out and find my wife and be like, sweetie, it's time for bed. What do you mean? You've been playing this for five straight hours. <laughs> yeah. And so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, so immediately I was like, no. I was like, I saw Breath of the Wild, and I was like, that is a game that I am not allowed to have. That it's is a game crazy. that I, like, because think about it. I do I'm, I do two web comics, a podcast. Uh, I've got uh-huh. conventions. I've got, like, a day job. I've got all of this stuff. Um, I'm putting out, like, I need to I need to do two more books within the next two months. Like, I need to f- format two, like, None of that would happen. None of yeah, that would yeah, happen no. if I had Breath of the Wild. It would be me sitting with the Switch in handheld mode on the couch in my living room, and my wife would have to poke me with a stick to get my attention because it would like I would just be lost. So I'm not allowed I'll, to ever own Breath of the Wild. I'll say this about the Switch. I did not get to futz with the handheld mode. Mm-hmm. I had some friends came down, and they wanted to... And uh, we w- yeah. and they wanted to show me what it was like, and we did a lot of uh, local multiplayer. Which I will be the first to say, I love local multiplayer. I'm all about yeah. multiplayer. Oh, no, that, people that's, in the same. Room. That's what consoles were for me for the longest mm-hmm. time. Uh, I mean, to like the the hours spent in, um, like especially back in college. You know, college was great for like having like. Like, especially, like, when in college, a couple semesters where I scheduled all my classes on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, <laughs> I did that. It was great. But that also meant, like, playing Dr. Mario in the TV lounge to three in the morning with friends. And uh, uh, to to show how old I am, um, also, like, uh, Perfect Dark for <laughs> hours on end. Um, God, a lot of Perfect Dark. I'll say this, the the um the other thing that really that I thought was really cool about the Switch was the Joy-Con itself. Yeah. Um and specifically that right out of the box, I mean, as expensive as those can be, like when you're doing things like Bomberman, with it when you break off those two little Joy Cons, you have two controllers at that point. 
I mean, they're tiny controllers, but now you have two. Um, so now you re- you technically have two controllers. So my friend who did buy the Switch bought two uh, bought two sets of Joy Cons, so we were able to have four people all playing at once with what was really two control with with really only one extra controller purchase. Yeah. So. That was really neat. I really like that. Now those Joy Cons, those Joy Cons haven't been perfect. Um, mm-hmm. There's been an issue with some of those uh, where uh, the when and this was like initially reported with some of the review units, and then it was a little bit more widespread once the actual things. But the the left Joy Con was desynchronizing on a lot of mm-hmm. a lot of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you got far enough away from the TV, the left one would desync, and it's really annoying. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's uh like and it, it took like it took forever for Nintendo to even acknowledge that that was a problem, but but they have. And uh they they are um they're instituting a, a system where you can actually uh get them fixed. Um like you do have to like uh send it in and like you'll be without your Joy-Con for a week. But uh and and the fix the and so it turns out so what's happening with the Joy-Con is it turns out that and it's specific it's specific to the left one. Um that there uh like there's some sort of uh, interference happening with some of the, the wireless modules and literally the fix is a small piece of um of conductive foam foam. <laughs> it's a tiny little piece of foam that is like in like it's an inch wide and like an inch long like it's a little tiny piece and it uh they literally what they do when you send it in is they open up the joy con glue in a piece of foam close it up and send it back to you and um it's been confirmed to fix it it's uh and and nintendo has uh come out saying that they will um uh, that that they fixed it at the manufacturing level, so future switches won't have that problem. So, uh, yeah. One less thing to worry about. Honestly, yeah, I'm happy. My friend didn't seem to have those problems with his. I was happy with what I played. Yeah. I I would call, at least in terms of fun, with the games I got to sample, I would get call it a hit. Um, ideal for party gaming especially yeah and i i think I, I think it's important to like say that like the 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 joy con issue was not affecting a majority of players it was a really small minority and uh we don't have any official statistics on like how many people this is actually like hitting mm-hmm. but let's all remember that like the the xbox 360's failure rate was like literally mm-hmm. High forty percent, like it was like forty eight percent, I think, for the failure rates on the Xbox three hundred and sixty. So, to have a few left Joy Cons that, you know, yeah, they they need to fix it, but could be worse. But eventually, they did. Yeah. Well, and importantly, you know, the Xbox three hundred and sixty managed to succeed in spite of that. See, it's, and and the I was bringing up uh, the fact that I want to buy, like, I haven't bought it yet. A switch yet because uh, Breath of the Wild is really bomber. Okay, so Bomberman looks great. I'll admit it. Bomberman looks great. It is great. I currently Just live saying. in a town though without a lot of people who I'd actually want to hang out and play video games with. Okay, so yeah. That's bomber. Legit. I mean, as a person who grew up playing Bomberman on various systems, um, you know, it's it's all about the multiplayer and. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not really possible for me to... I mean, I guess there's there's likely online multiplayer, I'm betting, um, but... Yeah, and I can't really speak for, like, right. single-player experience as much. Like, I I got I watched my friend play Breath of the Wild for a little bit, and it's gorgeous, but that's really all I can say about yeah. it, is that it was... I was impressed by it. Yeah, I guess what I'm, what I'm really just hoping for... What I'm waiting for is, like, for other games, like the, um, the Mario Kart release. Mm-hmm. Like that. Because Mario Kart games are amazing. I would say I always look forward to whenever Nintendo does a new Mario Kart. Yeah, um, that's, I think I think that's the 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 game like that is more you because know, you're talking about playing on TV, but like I, so I have consoles. I have a like, but I stopped buying consoles after my Wii, and it's because like I I played the crap out of the Wii for a really long time, and not just like gimmicky games, but like let me tell you, I played a lot of Excite Truck and Excite Bots. 
um, because I am a sucker for a good racing game. But really what happened to cause me to put it away and stop playing was um, this, my iPad. Because I just started playing video games on that. And, like, the idea of, like, my wife and I are in the living room and taking over the TV just is... See, growing up, we didn't have our Nintendo hooked up to our television. We had it hooked up to a Commodore 64 monitor in the same room as the television. <laughs> so okay. that was that was the rules, kids, is that uh, to, to keep my brother and myself from fighting is that... You could either control you could either control it was on the Nintendo or control it was on the television, but you couldn't control both. And so that's how we <laughs> uh settled arguments. Um and ended up watching my brother play a lot of Battle of Olympus. Um <laughs> But so so it's uh like the to me like always like having it on T V like when I share space with another person has always felt like weirdly obtrusive for me to then go and do and so like um when i was in college or when i lived with sean the orange course i used to play video games a lot more because like we had multiple tvs and like we weren't sharing space all the time um but like as as a married adult i revert back to like the way i was like as a kid though like with video games were like i don't want to take over the tv and there's just one big tv in the room so the idea of the switch of that handheld mode is like having a full having full level con having console level games on a device roughly the same size as the tablet that i've been playing you know um racing game like i play video games like actual games on the thing you know like real racing three and things like that like that are more complex than just like when people think of, like, an iOS game. Um, right. So, like, it's... That, that to me, like... Like, so, yeah, it's, like, the idea of, like, having that handhold is, is kind of a, like, a big selling point. And so it's, I may go back to buying consoles again for the Switch. And it's something... And this form factor is something that is what's going to draw me in. You know, it's... Like, I can't see myself getting back into the world of, uh, like, I could see myself playing any of those titles that are on the PS4 or the Xbox uh, One. Like, I could see myself playing those games, but, like, I like I should say I want to play those games, mm -hmm. but I don't want to take over, like, my home. Like, when I go and I dig out my 3DO, I play that in my office, like, just to have fun for like an hour but i want to sit down and like engage in a game for like four hours on a saturday and you know but i don't want to deprive other like the other person who i share a life with <laughs> the ability to do stuff so that's uh i, li I love this, the fact that it is effectively thing and it's a full console thingy a jigger uh not actually, you know, not just talk about things that happen in my living room because I know that the Famicom Dojo listeners really just weren't tuning in to, like, learn how things are in my living room. I think we should talk about how, like, the, the sales numbers of the Switch uh, is officially now um, has surpassed the Wii in its uh, f f first month sales. So it is... Which at least is in, a weird... A comparison point because yeah the Wii the original Wii was kind of a sleeper hit anyway it right. took people a while before they right and so it's yeah. like it's I'm really enthusiastic about the Switch but it's super important to realize that these numbers right now don't really mean anything yet because Nintendo is selling them as fast as they can make them mm -hmm. pretty much and um so we can't we don't really know how big the demand is beyond the initial demand because if we all remember the Wii U sold really well for its first like month or two it's you know it like and that's another just thing of shame that that was a console that didn't really catch on and you know I'm partly responsible here I don't own one but you know uh it I don't own I, one and I could have played on the second screen Mm -hmm. You know, but when I visit my sister-in-law, I enjoy playing it. Uh, uh, I actually have amiibos that I picked up for the next time I go to bother again in person. Because, yeah, because yeah, I have one. Yeah, yeah, uh, you, yeah actually, I my have, boyfriend has one. 
Anyway, I have more Animal Crossing characters Yay, for that I... the whole thing. Because, yeah, I enjoyed it that much. But, yeah, it's... Go on, Gen. I really don't know. I just Oh, like... no, I was just... Um, out of the three of those, I'm the one who has a Wii U. And I <laughs> use it every single day. Because we use it as our TV. Um, instead of actually having cable, we run Netflix and YouTube and Hulu through our Wii U. Which works... Re- freaking beautifully so what are you gonna do once you really can't keep doing that what do you mean yeah um if with uh if uh, when if the inevitable when nintendo decides to stop providing internet service for it or when the apps like stop getting the supported wii. like uh yeah. netflix on the wii doesn't work anymore mm, true so, I mean, like, eventually, like, you know, things are going to well, stop working. yeah, eventually we'd upgrade to whatever console. Well, you it's could just up- like, right right now, I'm, like, yeah. I'm cool with what I've got. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's We're also... actually looking to expand our, our retro um, console collection. Okay. So. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'll, I'll just say I recommend Same, a Roku. Same, really. Buy a Roku when you have to, just as a dedicated stream of Oh, <laughs> yeah definitely my Cause... parents have one and when i lose the ability to have netflix they will be like you should get a real cool i have i we love I, ours <laughs> i literally oh. gave my parents my old roku because uh krista and i uh replaced ours and i went and did that there we go sorry button wasn't responding I, <laughs> like I, uh, I have lots of google chromes i have like the chromecasts Oh, yeah, let I, me. I Chromecast. It works. Me. It works well for me. But I mean, I... well, the only reason why I don't the Chromecast is great because it's cheap. <laughs> I just, I don't. I had an extra one within reach from yeah. where I'm sitting, just to put in. For, I don't know why. I'm moving. Everything is weird when you're moving. But it's like, and and if you only want to spend thirty five bucks, you know, there's nothing wrong with a Chromecast. But like the Roku's got an actual interface. Mm-hmm. That's true. And, it, you know, it's because, like, you know, you know what happened when, like, before the show, uh, I was in my living room watching stuff on YouTube on my TV because... As you are wont to do. As I am wont to do. Um, and uh, when it, I said, okay, I got to go do a show now, I handed my wife the remote and I left the room. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I'm just saying... That's. I I don't have tons of money to throw around. I can't help. It. <laughs> I mean, I know it's like a hundred bucks for a box for the good. Like, no, they're cheaper Roku's. What am I talking about? I There's, just buy the expensive yeah. ones. I was like the the cheapest one is like forty bucks. Yeah, it's I I would go with um, the mid range like the, if you don't care about four K, their highest priced non four K one. I think it's like sixty. Something like that. Okay. It's because it's got a faster processor, and so it'll just be less annoying. Because I, yeah, my father-in-law has a really right. old Roku, like a low-level. Because I only own, I've only ever owned like that's like I always buy when I buy a new Roku, I buy the top of the line one because it's like it is our TV, like it's our sole source of TV, and I've used one of the low-end ones from like that literally was the same generation as one of the ones that's currently on one of my TVs, and it was just like a slog to get through the menus. Um, so, um, video games. Um, I was about to say, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, Gen mentioned, like, trying to get more retro systems. I'm definitely, I know that feeling. Cause it was really cool getting to play with a new system yesterday. Because, like, oh, as I've been, because as I've been moving, I've got all these, uh, like, uh, I'm in a weird position where finally having my own house, I can just have all of the systems out like in one place and it's really cool having a setup like that and most no it... yeah i wish i you know i wish i had space like i've only, i've got a couple things out in my uh office you know like i've got my vic 20 which you can't really see but it's behind me technically mm-hmm. that is a vic 20 and i've got you know over there my old ti and i've got the playdia in its box because who would ever want to play with the playdia um, and I've got my, my 3DO is actually out and hooked up to, uh, stuff. I, it's just off screen here. Um, 
because I do I do occasional streaming with that. But uh, like uh, most of my retro, most of my systems are in a box in the closet, just because I don't have anywhere I, to put them. I need to get some more retro systems. I need to get a Super Nintendo. I have a couple Super Fami games that are just sitting around that I still haven't played. I don't have a Super Nintendo. I don't. I, do. I have. I know you do. I, 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 I have because... multiple Genesises, but I have no Super Nintendo. I don't have the original Nintendo, but I have the Super Nintendo. I have I have I, a refurbished we, Nintendo. We currently have uh, Pokemon Silver in it because Eric was nice. doing a Nuzlocke on it. Um, yeah, we have like the weirdest collection of, well, maybe not the weirdest, but an interesting collection of consoles because like. We've got my yeah. SNES, his Dreamcast, my Wii, his Wii U, his nice. PlayStation 2. Like, <laughs> it's just weird. So oh, Ro- my, my Japanese my... Game Boy. So, so oh, to, nice. So to rope, us, uh, to rope us back kind of into the topic, the yeah. real question is the Switch is new, it's revolutionary, it is shiny, it is different than everything else out there. But the real question is, is this going to be... Uh, like a long-term hit, or is this going to be something that's really successful at first and fades away? And you said you you mentioned your Dreamcast. Mm-hmm. Now the Dreamcast was, of course, uh, revolutionary. It was beautiful. Came out on my nineteenth birthday. You can figure out how old I am by doing some Google there. <laughs> um, and it like like the Dreamcast was incredible, but it was eclipsed. By the PS2, and now obviously, you know, the there isn't, you know, a direct analog because, you know, the PS2 is the exact same thing, uh, effectively, that was doing the exact same thing that the Dreamcast is doing, only, uh, like, the only real difference is that the Dreamcast was, I mean, the Dreamcast is unique in that it came with um, a modem out of the box, so it was the first one with internet connectivity bundled. Like, there had been, there been there's been modems for game consoles going back to the 80s, but um, it was really the, the first bundled internet adapter um for a game console and that you know we wouldn't see that until the next generation of systems for everybody else um you know because if you wanted to put a PlayStation 2 online you had to buy an adapter and and things like that uh but and the real question is I think for the Switch long term is we have to ask ourselves is this going to be um is this going to be its own thing or like is this going to be a success or is this going to be a flash in the pan that we're all going to be talking about in two in 5 years about how what a great system it was if only it sold better I want it to be I, like I'm not a psychic or at least I'm not yeah. that kind of psychic uh I want this system to be a hit uh and I admittedly part of it is just that there's so many interesting things that I think Nintendo brings to the table that I'm worried about what where they will be if this system isn't a hit. Yeah. Uh, on the same on the other end of things though, like because it is both a handheld and a console, I'm curious what that's going to mean for the future of like the 3DS and that if that's also going to get like if they're going to just nudge those out so they can focus entirely on well one system for both uh I, I think it's really clear that and, that long-term dual screen gaming um isn't gonna, I mean the the 2DS is well, a yeah, conceit because mm-hmm. it's it's effectively one screen with an artificial divide on a 2DS mm-hmm. so um, I, I think, know because that's what I use yeah I, <laughs> the 3D- as I promised back when back when Nerd and Tie first started I I definitely couldn't afford a 3DS but I definite but I could afford a 2DS well it's it's okay I, the lenticular 3D never really took off anyways. <laughs> I mean, 3D is great, and and uh, Sean and and Vink talked about this in in a prior episode of the show that that 3D sure. is neat, but overall, home 3D has been an absolute failure uh, mm-hmm. across all markets of all manufacturers. Everybody who tried to do something 3D just kind of went. Eh. The only reason why the 3DS was a successful product was in spite of the 3D, not because of it. It was a cool feature that. Everything else about the console is what made it a success. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh. But okay, getting back to the yeah. switch, um, what is gonna interest me in the future is 
um like it it came out now and that's cool and we're gonna see how it does but it's gonna be very interesting to see how it competes with other brand new consoles that will be coming out yeah Mm -hmm. whether it be later this year or next year or whatever like I know, uh, people are gonna yell at me if I get these wrong, but I know the Expo is like getting a new fancy schmancy slim version. Um, and there's and already there's been a, that PlayStation Four Pro or whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So PlayStation and Xbox both have new consoles that will be coming out sometime. It'll be interesting to see how the Switch. Um, holds up to when those two come out well and it's interesting because it this is not a game system that has the same processing power or visual no, capability it's, it's an nvidia shield yeah. on the inside it's effectively just an nvidia shield tab- tablet mm-hmm. that's not a bad thing necessarily but that's what it no. is no instead of like just being hardcore processing and graphics it's more of just here's a collection of like all the neat stuff that we can cram into this thing like what how can we test the limits of gaming is well, really what well, i see from nintendo all the time well let's even look at like breath of the wild uh the mm-hmm. new zelda game that's already out breath of the wild is really cool in my opinion, because there there has been so much emphasis on higher processing power, more uh, complex graphics, uh, mm-hmm. this, that, and the other thing for the last few years. But everyone and their brother is talking about how beautiful Breath of the Wild is, and it does. It's not going for photorealistic graphics. It doesn't have that. It's on a system that doesn't have that same kind of processing power. But it's one of the most beautiful games I've looked at in years. And I think that that says a lot about what the Switch is doing. It's not about the processing power. It's about how you use it. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. That's all I got. Well, I think we just, again, just we just lost again. We lost again. We lost again. <laughs> so we'll hopefully reconnect again um, soon. But uh, so yeah, no, it's um, I think I think you're absolutely right with Breath of the Wild. There, it is. I mean, it's it, it's it's a uh, really we need to emphasize the design over, you know, it's it's design, it's designed to the limits of the machine and designed to work and kind of provide something gorgeous. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, Ken, you did disconnect. Yeah, we just. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so uh, Gen's internet died. Sorry about that, everyone. Famicom Dojo Disciples. Um, yeah, Gen it's... Back. We're so, going to get them back in. So the secret is, is that uh, Sean and Vink do everything pre-recorded, and so when something like this happens, they just cuddle around it and do oh do 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 her do 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 while, while we do things live. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. Uh, which means on the video, uh, you get to see me, so I don't have to fix Nick's video. Uh, but anyway, so it's uh, to get back to our discussion and to continue the discussion without interruption, like the professionals that we aren't. Um, <laughs> and and the audio listeners are just confused. Uh, I think that... Um, I think that it's it's important to uh, bring Gen back onto the show, and uh, uh, and we did it, and we did that Mission was magical. And Sean, you're just gonna love that section of the show. Trust me. <laughs> um, when you listen back to this and go, I'm putting this in my podcast feed. What have I done? Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get for trusting us. Well, okay, so like, uh, you know, the thing is that the other reason why, like, uh, I don't know, like, I've been playing like. I, I want to say this, and this is unrelated to the Switch, but with Pokemon Go, I've just been playing so much of that lately. <laughs> I don't know when I would have time to actually, like, dig into more games. Like, you don't even understand, man. So it's, uh, since Sean and, since Sean and Vink last talked about Pokemon Go, j- so much stuff has happened with the game. Um, like, Gen 2 came out, which is huge right now. Um, it finally comes. 
caught a whooper today. I'm so excited. Oh god, they're nice. all o- they're all over the place in Indiana. You should come down. Sometime. I barely play anymore. I keep running well, it's right, balls and then so, I'm too lazy to go to the so, shops. So <laughs> when this episode when this episode's been released, the water festival will have water festival will have been over for a couple of days. Right now it's still happening. Um mm-hmm. where they're doing a massive increase of water spawns across the world. I um, was trying to figure out why there was a star U in the middle of Janesville the other day. I have caught so many magic cards. <laughs> which there was. Um, Curious, and in this, in this thing, they, they just introduced a uh, shiny magic carp and Gyarados yep. is, um Red form. Yeah, it's. Uh, my wife, Chris, has gotten a shiny magic carp. I have not. Nice. Uh,. I'm. I like the way that technically the way you said nice. It was right after I said I have not gotten one. So sorry. Uh, <laughs> but uh, like, but so what? What? What's weird thing? So, but because of the water festival, like a lot of people have been out playing. Like the park was like the weather's been really nice, at least down here in Indiana. So, um, like with like the temperatures in the seventies this weekend, like the park was just like we were, we went out to a local park. Which is a totodile nest right now here. Um, <laughs> so many times. There's an octillery <laughs> nearby. Dang it! <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, like we we went out to play, and it was just there were tons of people playing again, um, and it's it's kind of remarkable. Um, well, I think um, my theory is that part of why it died down so bad was winter happened. Well, yeah, that's and a lot of that's people like of didn't play. Because it was cold and snowy and icy outside, but now that it's good, like warming up and like summer's coming, yeah. I think it'll like interest and in, like playability well, in it is gonna really hike up because it's nice out. Well, and people yeah, be outside means, more. And I think that's part Pokemon of Pokemon like, Go players get ready to defend your gyms. Oh my god! So it's been such a pain. Like I literally, so we got knocked out of a gym at the Delphi Canal Park in Delphi, Indiana, which we've been regularly. We we have a habit of driving to taking over gyms in Delphi, Indiana. Because it's about a 20 minute drive away. There's like f- one, two, three, four, five. There's six gyms in that town. And usually, nine times out of 10, we own all of them. I think right now we're not in the one church out on 421. Not that you guys have any context for what that means. Um, <laughs> but, uh, like, literally, because we got knocked out of a gym we've been in forever, uh, we got in the car and drove a half hour uh, <laughs> to go retake the gym from those damn dirty mystics. And, uh, like, we're nice people. Like, if we see, like, if we lost a gym and we see that it went instinct, we leave it and go, like, oh, we're not going to be the bad guys in this story. We'll mm-hmm. we'll let the mystics take them out, and then we'll go back and take it for Valor. Um, I just keep... Yeah, it's, uh, so it's, I think that, um, so, but but the one thing I've been realizing is, like, so I always think of myself as, like, not a... I play a lot, and I I, th- I think I didn't always realize how serious of a player I am because I know I, I said this to, to to you guys on uh, our our real show uh, a while ago that like I'm I think I think at the time I was only level I was level thirty I'm level thirty one now, um, but I might have been level twenty nine when I said it, uh, but I was talking about how like I like I was only like level thirty or something and. It got a reaction for you guys because, like, I compete in some of these some of these high level gyms that are like these level ten gyms that you fight to get into and like mm-hmm. you hold on as long as possible. And like, I've been in one of these gyms uh, since January. Dear God! And I had gotten knocked out of it. Our Valor had held it; it just hadn't gotten knocked, like, but I had gotten cycled out of it because once level ten, effectively, someone beating one Pokemon will knock a player out, and then and then. If someone gets there and relevels it back up before you can get back to it, then you, you're not in there. Um, I like I I'm right now the lowest I I was in there like, but we've held that gym effectively since August. Like it went down to an like it's been a Valor gym since August with a few interruptions. Like uh, there are a couple of players who like there are a couple of players who would try to regularly take it down, and then literally because I can see it from my apartment. <laughs> we would go take it back within a half hour and to the point so like starting in october i I think it got taken down once at some point in the winter and then we took it back but uh i've been in there since january and i'm at the bottom of the gym right now with a uh 2600 something vaporeon is at the bottom (laughs) is at the bottom 
Um, and uh, you know, it's just it's uh it like I think I take for granted though how much I know about the game and like because. Like I think there, there's a lot of stuff that like Niantic is really bad about explaining how things work in the game. Like uh, <clears throat> understatement. There, there's this frustrating <laughs> thing where you'll see someone trying to prestige a gym and it's just taking them forever. Like because a lot of people don't know that to like so when you take down a gym, you want to go in with your biggest Pokemon and just fight it and take it down, right? Right. And um, the AI tries to recommend you the best team, although usually it does it in the worst order possible. So you have to just, you know, rejigger a few things because this gym starts out with a Flareon. So I don't want to go in with a grass type Pokemon. Too late. You did. Right. So <laughs> let's make sure you switch your executor to like your second or third for when you're fighting Vaporeon. Um, the uh, but. Uh, the AI is especially useless for prestiging because it tries to give you like attacker groups, but to you get hardly any prestige. If you beat a Pokemon while training a gym with a higher CP Pokemon, you get hardly any prestige. If you um, fight it with a lower CP Pokemon, like if say there's a 2,500 Vaporeon, if you go in with a 1,700 CP Executor, you are going to get hundreds of prestige added every time you beat it, as opposed to like fifty. And so it it's just like, but nobody tells you that. Like if you go research the game, if you go online, if you go to the Silk Road, you can find that stuff out. But average players don't know that. They don't know that there's a if on a like curveballs only give you ten extra. Um, Curveballs only give you 10 extra XP when you catch a Pokemon on a curveball, where like it's when you kind of arc the ball to get it. And there's a there's a 10 right. XP bonus, but it actually increases your catch chance by 1.5 times. Oh, so huh. yeah, it's so if you can if you can curveball and still get like a nice or a great, where you're not going to curveball and hit an excellent. That's such a tiny target. <laughs> But, uh, like, if you do that, you greatly increase your chance of catching the Pokemon. But nobody knows that. Like, pe people who don't break apart the game and analyze every little bit just have no clue. And so it's it's frustrating. I can, like... It, yeah. I play a lot of Pokemon Go. Like, a lot. Like I'm getting that oh, impression. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, I'm only kind of getting that impression, though. Just I'm literally. just saying. If I had a Switch, it would be Pokemon Go and Breath of the Wild right now, and then I wouldn't eat. Because you know what I forgot to do today? Eat. Uh-huh. I had I... breakfast, and then it got to showtime here, and I hadn't eaten, and I had to eat something real quick. I have a bunch of checks mix here that i was gonna try to eat before the show that i didn't get to so i cannot imagine being that absorbed in i i i i, I it is i rarely forget to eat i'm gonna put it that way but then again i yeah uh, i sometimes do sometimes when like there'll be days when i'm just like freaking zooming on a project and i just like look up it's like oh it's like four hours later i should probably go eat something oops yeah you guys need to like eat on a regular basis <laughs> it's important and stuff i have someone who reminds me have you seen how I fat i am eating. i could probably live off of this for like a week before there was a problem <laughs> uh, oh my gosh oh my gosh okay. i'm, I'm warm for the else winter video games we could talk about well, Vigi games. Vigi games. I, I think I think we've we've talked. I think we've. We've. All right. I think I think at this point, uh, I'm gonna press this button.
Hey, what's your favorite movie? This week, it's my favorite too, even if it's Roadhouse. Roadhouse is the story of a big city bouncer with the secret power to rip people's throats out, <laughs> who comes to a small town full of really dumb people to be a bouncer there. <laughs> this is 10 Minutes About Your Favorite Movie. Listen to 10 Minutes About Your Favorite Movie every Monday on the Little Podcast Network. All right, guys. I think it's time to 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 visit a special place. Special How special are we talking? I, I think it's time for, uh, to, for future retro pile of shame or. Ooh. Yeah. In future retro, we talk about contemporary video games that have the potential to be remembered as classics, or classics that we played for the first time, or just more recently. And in Pile of Shame, we talk about the games we haven't been playing, and we try to convince each other if we should. Or not. I wonder who those other two people's voices are. They, they keep <laughs> popping in. So, yeah, it's uh, the Pile of Shame. Oh, my God, my Pile of Shame is so deep. You have no idea. <laughs> you Don't have no idea. I'm about, list. <laughs> I'm going to pull something out here. I'm going to pull so something out and... I don't want you to lose your shit, but it's this. And this uh, that is Final Fantasy Nine. That is Final Fantasy Nine. I want you to look very closely at this package. The the, the fact this that is, it isn't opened. You this mean, is an unopened. And I want to point out this is the original edition. It's not the greatest hits version. It is the original release of Final Fantasy Nine. It is still in its shrink wrap. Good God. And I have owned this game since it came out. I wonder how much that's worth. I would say you could probably get make a lot of good money on that just in the condition that it's in. It is yeah. it is in perfect condition. It is sealed in its original shrink wrap. There's even a little hangy thing on it from the video game store in which it was purchased. Gosh, so, those things fall off so easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's uh I have I have had this game uh for seventeen years about and I I have never played it. I <laughs> I played Final Fantasy X. Oh boy! You know, I never finished Final Fantasy VIII. It's okay. I started Final Fantasy VII in 1999, and I still haven't finished it. So what happened? And this is the same reason why I also have never. Um, this is less interest. This is a less valuable item, but just because. I also still have Chrono Cross here unplayed. <laughs> it is the greatest hits version because what happened was that I hadn't finished Final Fantasy VIII. I ran out of time, and then I went out and bought a PS2, and I got Final Fantasy X, and I wanted to play the new game from the new system. And so I've beaten Final Fantasy X, but I never finished VIII. I never played nine, and I have not played Chrono Cross, but it gets worse. Because I have this, which is Vandal Hearts 2, which I scoured the earth for. Because Vandal Hearts 1 is my favorite game of all time. And if you've played Disgaea and you like Disgaea, it's it's not quite as intricate, but it's the same kind of gameplay of turn-based strategy. Vandal Hearts 1 is a fantastic PS1 game. It, it'll only take you like 12 hours to beat, 15 hours to beat. Um, are, are the characters as charming as Disgaea, though? Because... Some that's, of, that's the real question. Well, okay, no, it's 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 much it's a much more kind of direct, uh, serious game. Uh, no. you, you play the main character Ash Lambert, and it's uh, but I, I will say the the original ending kind of made me cry, uh, so it was good. Um, but it, it no one remembers Vandal Hearts because it came out the same year as Final Fantasy Tactics, so ah. it mm-hmm. like it 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 wasn't as complex as Final Fantasy Tactics, but it's got uh, bigger maps and more diverse um. Like tactics has got like more characters and like uh, is a little less guided, but uh, Vandal Hearts One has more diverse uh, goals. Like instead of just kill all the enemies, sometimes it's defeat these certain points or get characters to these positions, or you know do X thing within a certain number of rounds. It's it's more diverse missions in the game uh, for gameplay type, and it's one of my favorite games ever. This is the sequel that I have never played. Vandal Hearts 2 that I searched the earth for and it it, it apparently it is a used copy purchased from Electronics Boutique. Oh dear. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, so I've I scoured the earth for this game, and I've never I've never played that either. So I have this stack of, and I I, I did bring out Final Fantasy VIII because I haven't finished it, and I never will finish it because I lost the damn memory card with my save oh, game on it. So it, it's just I'm not going through two discs worth of content again. Screw that, I'm done. I will go read spoilers on the internet if I ever want to know how that game ends. <sighs> I think the only um, Final Fantasy games I've ever finished are 7 and 10. I think that's true for a lot of people, though, for some reason. But it's not but because could, I... Didn't... I could be wrong. <laughs> it's not because I didn't want to. Um... For for what it's worth, I also I have a copy of Final Fantasy XII, that's just sitting around waiting to be opened. And I mean that that I I mean it, it's been open. I got it used, but I haven't played it. Okay. Um, that that's just sitting there. And as I mentioned, Final Fantasy VII, uh, I started in 1999, and I have re- have every intention of finishing. <laughs> um, I I literally I honestly do. I have the memory card and everything. I just. I play a little bit of it every year and then I put it down again. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, there's another one. Um, so uh, uh, some of you might know that uh, um, the most recent Super Robot Wars game, you know, the one where all these different anime from like come together and, you know, they, they team up and stuff. The most recent Super Robot Wars game, uh, the uh, Asian mainland version uh actually has english subtitles on it so i would like to get that but before i play that i need to beat super robot wars 4 for the super famicom which i do have a copy of but i don't have a super fami to play it on and last but not least because i know it will disappoint sean very deeply (laughs) just like vink i too have mass effect (laughs) just sitting here Uh... and i have not i have I have oh, barely gosh. played it yet. Archimise gave this to me. I'm so sorry, Archimise. Oh. I, I'm, I'm barely, I barely started the first one. That's Mass Effect, all three of them. So that would then. <laughs> Jesus. I'm sure Sean will be disappointed. Oh. Again, what's on your pile of shame? Well, um, as far as like. As far as physical, like, games I've owned, I've usually, usually when I get a game, I'll immediately, like, tear it open and at least play, like, ten minutes of it, just to, like, you know, because I'm so excited. But this one I got, and I haven't played it yet, and I want to play it, and it looks really cute. What, and, say it out loud for the for the people listening to the audio, which is 99% oh, of the people sorry. that are going to hear this. <laughs> I'm so used to us doing, like, the video part. I know. Um, this is their show, though. <laughs> it is Kirby and the Rainbow Curse for the Wii U. It's the Ooh. newest claymation-y one. Um, and, yeah, I got it so that Eric and I could play it together, but we just haven't gotten around to it ever. Oh. No. Which is sad, because it looks super cute. Then it's Kirby, and Kirby, like has the most shockingly good track record of any Nintendo character. Right. Like, his games are consistently really good. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. So, so how about Future Retro? How do you guys... Do you guys have anything, like, you're playing now that you think is going to be worth a lot in the future or culturally valuable? Culturally significant. Well, mm-hmm. I... I'm going to put my hat in for Shovel Knight Mm. because, oh my gosh, it is so gosh darn flipping, like, it's absolutely gorgeous. The music is amazing. The way it plays, like, it's just so, it's so good. It's so good. And I I still think that, like, years and years later, people are still going to be like, oh, oh, look, it's Shovel Knight. Yeah. And we're going to be freaking pumped for shovel night like (laughs) i have a i have a favorite game from recently and it this is going to be my future retro and it's it's kind of a heartbreaking thing to think about though because i guess i'm going to use this also as a 
opportunity to get up on my soapbox about things that bother me about modern gaming. <laughs> um, I love Journey. I think the Journey. Band? No, I'm sorry. The game. The game Journey by that game, game company might be one of the greatest works of art I've ever interacted with. It's Three. it's 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 beautiful. It's atmospheric. It's um the music is uplifting there have been times where i have been in a very deep state of depression and that game makes me want to be alive again and it is such an amazing game but what's frustrating about journey what or what's uplifting but also frustrating about it is that because it is about this wordless journey that you go on you meet other people going on the same journey via online and it is such a beautiful game and such an interesting game that I'm really sad that someday those servers are going to be down. Yeah. And people mm -hmm. aren't going to be able to experience the wonder that was playing Journey the way it's supposed to be played. And gosh, they recently had an in game, like five event. year event meetup. Yeah. Like in the game. And that's like, that's not going to be a thing anymore. Yeah. Yeah, there that that is that is going to come. It might be in the near future. It might be a ways off, but yeah, that's that's going to be a thing soon. Journey. Yeah, the that online part of Journey, that major part of Journey that's not going to be there. And even more so with some PC games that are entirely about the online. Once the server is gone, all those elements, all those things that all that the uh, people who designed that game made aren't going to be accessible or usable. Well, and that's yeah. And that's a really frustrating thing with modern gaming is that, uh, and I know that Sean and Vink have talked about this on the podcast before, that the online component has just kind of ruined a lot of stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Not necessarily ruined, but like, um, and when people try to emulate things themselves, like uh, it, there's not always a lot of support or sometimes there's legal takedown where like people who were trying to run a, um, an original, sh like a original version of World of Warcraft server um, were shut down by Blizzard uh, for running an authorized server, but it's because it was a version of the game that you can't really play anymore because the expansions have changed the dynamics and mechanics and geography of of WoW over its you know yeah. decade of mm -hmm. you know of existence. So it's like there's not a lot of support. There's some games like um, Fantasy Star Online where people have managed to uh, build their own servers. Like the for those of you who don't know, Fantasy Star Online was a online game for the Dreamcast that was best played with friends. Um, Eric still has I remember it. That one. He showed yeah. it to me, and, and it's there, really cool. And like, I mean, with 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 the Dreamcast, if you don't have a uh, broadband adapter, which those are really rare and hard to find, like you have to do all this like tricky stuff with the modem to like connect to um, uh, a server, uh, a fan run server, but. Um, with these newer systems, it's just, it's not um, doable and it's going to be lost. But it's even like, but beyond that, it's beyond that. Take um, the ephemeral nature of just digital distribution. Um, mm -hmm. If we take a look at something like uh, a cultural phenomenon like PT, which uh, when, when Silent Hills was canceled was yanked from uh, people's PlayStations. And I know that uh, Sean Orange actually still has a copy of the game on his system. Um but I I'm very proud of the fact that I own a physical copy of Amnesia: The Dark Descent. Like I know yeah. that that was a Steam phenomenon, mm -hmm. but I'm glad I own a physical copy of it because I think that's one of the greatest horror games ever made. Right. And Great. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm I want some way to prove that it existed. As a historian, that kind of drives me nuts. Well, and video being a video game historian is a massive pain. It's it's because like you take a look at these online games and. Like, in 20 years, the only thing that's going to, like, exist still of PT are videos of people playing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's... There... Well, and that's true of a lot of games. Right, but that's that's what's going to happen. I mean, that's long-term... Yeah, PT's unique because it got pulled so quickly. But in 20 years, all of these games that are being, like, anything that's a digital release, or even a digital release of content where... There was a physical release of the game, but large portions of it, like an expansion packs and things like that, mm -hmm. were then released online and not in physical form. That that part is going to be lost unless someone archives hard drives and does a lot of and like a lot of conscious work. 
And I think that there's going to be a large segment of our video game history which is just going to evaporate, where things are only going to be remembered through uh, rec- video recordings and any game that was like insignificant enough not to you know, be a hit on, on the, the streaming spaces is, is effectively just going to be f- like no one's going to remember what it looks like. Which is sad because, you know, like I, I'm I'm obsessed with like really obscure, like not necessarily really obscure because everyone's heard of it, but like unpopular platforms like the 3DO. Um, you know, I have well, we, video games, the video gaming subculture. We're already bad at archiving our stuff. <laughs> we are. Yeah. No, we're, we are really bad at this. Like uh, the uh, like you look at things like uh there's plenty of stuff from the 8-bit era that we don't have adequately um, documented, let alone, you know, you know, 16-bit or even PlayStation 2. Like, even as recent as PlayStation 2, you know, yeah. there's... And, and all, and, you know, up through that era, things were at least everything was on the disc, but now... Well, but, but the thing is, though, is, like, with retro gaming, like... So this is a mm-hmm. game, Pyramid Intruder, right? This is a game for the 3DO. It was a Japanese only release. It is a re it is an a re-release adaptation by Taito of a pioneer um of a laser active video game. It's some of the the stuff's been modified, but originally started life as a game for the laser active um under a slightly different title and then was re-released by Taito as Pyramid Intruder for the 3DO. Um this game while not often found if you find a physical copy, you can, for one. For two, I can pick this up. I can put this in a 3DO, a real one, or a, mm-hmm. or a Gold Star one. That's a joke. That's a 3DO joke. Um, or I can put it in an emulator. <laughs> um, and I can play this game, and it'll just work. The fact is that there is no like physical thing. Like Even with the 8-bit Nintendo cartridges... Yeah, the battery backup might die and you can but you can do repair on that. You can pull the data off mm-hmm. that. You can pull a ROM off of that cartridge. Like Right. You can't yeah. do that if the data doesn't exist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that yeah. also makes me kind of scared for things like stuff that's coming out on the PS4. Yeah, yeah or uh, right now where like where you you buy the physical disc but then you have to download all this stuff yeah. in order to play the disc. It's like uh that's kind of ugly. That's yeah. kind of scary. <laughs> it's like, why'd you buy the disc? Exactly. It's like, what's what's the point? <laughs> yeah, it's. I think. Um, I think it's it, it's it's gonna be it, it's a difficult thing, man. It's. Well, and it's only gonna get more difficult if, um, if things in the future go towards all digital. Right. And oh, I've, I've come to terms with the fact that that's where the future is headed, and I'm still, here I am in my fortress made of DVD packaging, <laughs> you know, yeah. not wanting to give up physical media, you know, it's... Yeah. Well, it's, it's the same with books, mm-hmm. um, CDs. VHS tapes, CDs, yeah. Well, the funny thing is with, with, with movies, I always buy the, I always get the, the disc plus digital copy version because I want to have the disc, but you know what? Most of my movies, you know what I've not watched? The yeah. physical disc. I've watched the movies since I bought them, but I can pull them up in HD on my Roku. Right. You know, I'll, you know, open, you know, whatever ultraviolet connected app I'm using right now. I think I'm using Voodoo right now. And, you know, pull up, you know, Hit and Run or pick up, pull up Shaun of the Dead or pull up, you know, all these movies that I bought the, the, the plus digital, you know, copies of. I was buying those with, uh, I was originally trying to always buy the Blu-ray plus DVD plus digital copy because I didn't actually have a Blu-ray player for a really long time. And that's how I was watching the HD version. I do I do now own Blu-ray players for, well, we have two Blu-ray players now. Um, uh, so so I've actually, I started, to, but I've, I've still been watching them on the digital copies because that's what's, uh, like, again, like, because the TV's already on the Roku mode because that's how we watch everything you know because between sling netflix amazon hulu uh youtube like it's the cw app which is now become the most used app on our television because (laughs) 
I'm so to, behind. It used to all be on Hulu, list. man. I am I am so behind on Riverdale. Um it's uh but I'm caught up on Arrow, Flash, and Supergirl and Legends. So, yeah. you know. I'm behind on all and I'm ashamed oh. to admit that. It's been so good. So you don't know what's happening yeah, with Car and Monel. I've been moving. I can't help it. I'm sorry. You don't know what's happening with Car and Monel. No, All I don't. All I know is that Tolkien was on Legends. He was. Holy crap. Yeah. I need to catch up with this shit. <laughs> this season we've had yeah. both George Lucas and J.R.R. Tolkien. No, the, the, I saw the George Lucas episode. That one was fantastic with a capital tastic. Yeah. I, I just saw the promo pics of the actor playing... Tolkien in the uh, World War One stuff. Yeah, so. that was that was last week. That, that was uh, I'm excited about the episode that will have just aired the day before this. Ep- no, two days before. Cause it's on Tuesdays now. Um, a couple days before uh, this episode re- uh, releases because um, they're gonna have the Legion of Doom like helmet base. Yes. Finally. Oh crap! The crap! Thing that I was campaigning for when I first guys, heard that name. Guys, we're doing the wrong show. <laughs> Dang it! Back to video games. Um, oh well, that um, that sounds like a good place though to uh, for me to hit a button. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna Superman I'm... 64 bringing it back together. Oh God, I'm hitting a button. To train your game, head over to our show notes at famicomdojo.tv slash podcast for additional pictures, video, and bonus audio for this episode. Call us at 608-492-1923 to leave a voicemail for our mail episodes, or send us a comment on Facebook or Twitter at Famicom Dojo. Consider leaving us a five-star review on iTunes, and be sure to subscribe to Famicom Dojo on YouTube for our latest videos about retro, import gaming, and more. So, yeah. So what did we learn today? The Switch is out. Uh, it's selling really well. That's great. Uh, had some issues. They fixed it with a little piece of foam. Uh, we found out way too much about your living room setup. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we, we, we also learned that maybe we shouldn't be trusted with other people's shows. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, we learned that we are terrible people who buy video games and don't play them. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> also, and, uh, we learned because we've never announced it officially on the show. I will say that uh, it's really good that Vink's Den of Shame is on the other side of the planet because I want to steal half the things in it. Yeah, and also so. we learned that I could make a killing on eBay. <clears throat> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You yeah. could with that, that Final Definitely. Fantasy Nine, your yeah, unopened you Final Fantasy Nine. Yeah, yep. that is a. Uh, so um, I, I've been instructed by Sean to uh, mention that he's going to be at No Brand Con uh, this, uh, in, a, in a couple weeks. And that is, oh, no uh, way. I'm going to be at No Barnes Con. Oh, I am, too. I'm going to be at there, too. Uh, when is well, that hey. No Brand Con? That is April 21st through 23rd in the Wisconsin Dells. Uh, you can, find Sean, you can find Sean Orange there. You can hit him with rocks. You can throw things at him. You can just, like, be mean to him in person. It's great. Mm-hmm. I love it. Uh, obviously, uh, for for those of you who haven't quite caught on this April Fool's episode, that uh, the three of us uh, are from the podcast Nerd and Tie at mm-hmm. nerdandtie.com. And if you go there now, because even though they're recording it after we record <laughs> this, oh it will have released days earlier on our website. Um, <laughs> because time, man time it works Not in so thing. many ways that uh that uh vink and sean have recorded an episode of nerd and tie podcast where which is a pop culture and convention scene podcast that records every fortnight um and again we're recording this before they record that but they're releasing that first and uh they're gonna be doing that in a video version too so uh you can find uh that that episode nerdentie.com or uh youtube.com slash tregorn t-r-a-e-g-o-r-n is our youtube channel um and if you're asking why it has that url it's because i have an old partner account and i didn't feel like changing the url um 
the uh and yeah so acceptable and so you can find us there also uh if you're listening to this um this episode is going to come out just a couple of days before i am uh me trey dorn i'm going to be at the independent show slash hoosier con on april 2nd in indianapolis um and all three of us besides no brand con uh, april 21st to 23rd the three of us are going to be at kiroshi con in dekalb illinois on saturday april 8th can i hear a heck yeah heck yeah so uh that that is that is important stuff that you need to know because it's magic man i believe it's magic magic he's a magic man oh dear With lord magic hands and oh so dear. I think oh I, th- I think we've taken I think we've <laughs> driven this truck as far off the rails as we could <laughs> off the cliff. <laughs> Train yep. go off the rails, trucks go on roads. The truck shouldn't have been on the rails. I screwed up that metaphor. Okay, we're just and... we're just deep into Furious 7 right now, just so deep. Let's just get out. <laughs> All right. So, with that in mind, I guess now the dojo is Falling off a cliff. <laughs> oh God, Sean, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, I am. I'm kind the of. The dojo sorry. is crumbling into dust. And I'm trying to. Uh... <laughs> there we go. The end theme wouldn't cue, and I don't know why. Good job. I am so never being allowed to do this again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sean. I'm sorry. You trusted me, man. Babacom Dojo.